Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hi, everybody. We are live. This is Cospac Live. And today we are joined by UbuCon from Arizona and also. I, I'm see. I'm still trying to do yep. It backwards. Yeah, this is going to be hard. <laughs> Rain cloud from, from the Pacific Northwest. Um, so we'll go ahead and start with the introductions. I am Thermal Cosplay, also known as Sam. I've been cosplaying since 2014. You guys know me, and if you don't know me, check our past other 100 episodes. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Chibi Raincloud. I'm a Pacific Northwest cosplayer who's kind of dabbled in a little bit of everything. Um, I love competitions and working with uh, workshops and all kinds of fun stuff. Um, good morning. I'm still working through my first cup of caffeine, so <laughs> this will be one of those mornings. That's okay. And then we'll have the full staff of UwuCon introduce themselves. Cool. Uh, my name is Justin Park. I'm the vice director here at UwuCon. Um, my specialties lie in the food industry, so that's kind of what I focus on uh, for our team right now. Hi, I'm Preston. I am uh, the director of UwuCon, and I am the owner of Olympus Games uh, here in Mesa, and that's who we kind of just kind of We've gone off of that is hosting the events out in our parking lots and just kind of starting from from I think two years ago to now. So now we're excited to uh, to be launching UUCon. Hi, I'm Lauren Knight. I'm the assistant director of UUCon. I have a background in live event planning and what I like to call people logistics and figuring out how to best move people through a space. Um, so I will also be boots on the ground all three days of UwuCon. Hi, I'm Shauna Fuji. Um, I'm the Director of Marketing and Communications. And so right now I'm helping with a lot of copywriting as well as like the social media. So anything you see in terms of writing on social and like the Uwu voice, that's me. <laughs> Hi, I'm Indiana. I am the Director of Vendors and Artists. Um, I've been a vendor at cons for three years now and I've attended many cons over 10 years. Well, thank you all for joining us today. We kind of wanted to talk about UwuCon since it's a new convention in the Arizona scene. And I've seen, I've been in the convention scene for over a decade now. Before I started cosplaying, I was a comic book artist. Um, and so I used to do this stuff, um, but then I got a crazy job that <laughs> prevents me from drawing as much as I'd like. So when you work in cybersecurity, you have to make a choice. <laughs> so, um, I was like, I'll do cosplay instead these days. Um, but I was really excited to hear about another potential convention coming up. So I wanted to discuss with you guys what you're, you know, what's going on. Before we do that, I want to say hi to Cool Gamer from YouTube and hello to Joe Cluck from Facebook. So thank you for joining us on the stream today. So we're going to, I guess our first, I mean, you kind of already answered the question a little bit about introducing yourselves, but let's talk about a little bit about how UbuCon got founded, who its founders are. Um, and why you chose Arizona. Sure. So we, we created UwuCon. Um, uh, myself is, uh, is a founder, Preston, uh, of Olympus Games, and then uh, Justin uh, as one of my partners. Uh, and then uh, another partner that is not here uh, is uh, Josh uh, from Action Ride Shop, uh, who is... Um, who is just involved as well, but we, we kind of just kind of created this con over the last, uh, uh, like probably past years. Like we've really wanted to kind of grow our own convention because we've been doing slow, but steady kind of ramping up to a larger convention. Like we've, we've been a part of, you know, hosting the, uh, some, some, um, like, um, like outside of our parking lot, uh, pop-ups and everything uh to also um be co-host of uh be my secret cars and anime uh last year uh we co-hosted that as well so we thought it was time to actually stand on our own and kind of bring something to arizona that we're trying to show a little bit of a difference and showed uh, like a different curation of uh, of anime and bring the culture uh into it as well so and that's where my partner uh, Justin here is helping us with it, uh, with the whole food cr uh, curation and everything like that. So I'll kind of turn it over to him, let him explain what what it is too. Yeah. Also, uh, it's it's Arizona because we're all locals. Um, 
uh, Preston and I met actually at my restaurant. Uh, so I own a restaurant in Mesa called uh, Drunken Tiger. It's a Korean pub. And uh, he walked in one day. He was just admiring the art on my wall. We kind of linked up like that. I, I visited his shop, which is like one of the biggest, if not the biggest trading card game shop in Arizona. And uh, we just kind of started talking about cafes in the beginning. Um, that kind of developed into what UUCon is now. Um, in terms of what we want to bring, uh, like Preston said, uh, we, we want to focus heavily on the more cultural aspects of anime. Like a lot of the conventions here, um, that it's 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 all just anime heavy without kind of like the the little nitpicky nuances that like other conventions bring. So in my turn, yeah. Like, have you are you familiar with Sakura Con? Because this is making me think of Sakura Con in Seattle, which is more around celebrating Asian culture and talking about you know how it's influenced the media that exists today. That's so popular. Yeah, I haven't yeah. personally been to Sakura Con. Uh, I've been to like Anime Expo, Crunchyroll Expo. They have some more like, you know, they're a little bit larger. Um, so yeah, uh, that's what we're trying to do. Uh, we're trying to become more kind of like for everyone, but culturally accurate, also fun, just like convention. We just want to do cool things with cool people. Well, that's awesome. Thank you for like presenting, you know, kind of the top level view of UbuCon, which is I think what a lot of people needed. I know that in general in Arizona, we're suspicious of new conventions. And I think that's just because we've had it, two or three new conventions pop up, take money and then vanish. And yeah. so people get really concerned when they see something new come up and they aren't necessarily, you know, seeing the faces behind what's being developed so i was like let's show them the faces these are real people and <laughs> they've got experience they've interacted you know you're here, a business yeah. owner yeah. you've done gambates or, or something similar to the pop-ups where it's just like the let's go outside have fun and have little anime pop-ups everywhere i've gone to a few of those parking lot pop-ups and other um other events too so to see that you've you've interacted with your audiences before and are familiar with what their feedback may be is awesome have you guys been to any of the like the Akibaras uh, ones that we posted here? Yes, I have been to at least one of them. Um, which one I would have to look at my calendar because I have to look <laughs> at my calendar. I I get a lot of invites. See, this is a <laughs> that's good. Very it's interesting thing on my phone. <laughs> this is very interesting from my standpoint because. Yeah. I had never heard of anime pop-ups until I joined Cost Talk Live and started learning about how the South does their convention stuff. Um, we just recently got a company that started doing pop-ups in our area. So like the first couple I think happened this year, um, besides like Facebook meetups and picnics that like people would sponsor. But we had, uh, we now have Gamer Heaven in Seattle and they started doing pop-up events where people bring their cars and food and cosplay. And it's just a one or two day thing. And I honestly had never heard of that concept until recently. And I think it's super cool that you guys already have that base. And then you're just taking that and going with it. I also love the idea of like the concept of culture because I, soccer con is my head con and a lot of it is based off of Japanese calligraphy and kimono, and they have a lot of workshops to really represent culture on top of the anime representation. So this is, I, I'm i disappointed I'm up here. Like, I want to go. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you one year, and I'll make you brave our heat. <laughs> now, now when, when you mentioned uh, Gamer7, uh, is that is that Andrew the, uh, mm -hmm. that runs Gamer7, the same as like he does in Houston? And so uh, so he, has, he now has a, a, like a sister company. So he's yeah. in Minnesota. Minnesota still he actually well he was here for emerald city last week last week yeah it was last week. he was here um and he came and checked us out and he actually comes to the shop more often than not but he is still doing his his thing in his store um but we now have a sister location that is ran by i forgot his name i'm just getting to know the family i just i just found out that we had the store like a couple of uh -huh. months ago so um it's really cool I'm, I'm out of the TikTok loop so i never know anything but um yeah so yeah so andrew um uh me and andrew have been on uh kind of talking terms and um uh andrew at you know gamers heaven and then also um ed over at um express skins uh and uh, hopefully Senpai Squad are all uh, kind of collaborating with us to come out uh, and have uh, a big booth oh. and everything. 
So. That's so cool. See, that's awesome. Yeah. Like, see, and it's just like this. Here you go, bye, guys. We're we're giving you credibility. Arizona. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, that that is like, absolutely oh, no. wonderful to hear because like Gamer Heaven has been so much fun and like the oh, little yeah. tiny bit. Like I've been in their Discord and like just kind of like talking a little bit and they have had such a really great experience like it, i feel like there's a little change happening in the washington cosplay scene and i feel like this pop-up thing is becoming a lot more popular and it's definitely getting somewhere in our area which is nice <laughs> yeah well and exactly. i think it's good because it, it takes conventions right that are typically a little bit more exclusive and it makes them inclusive for individuals who may not be able to afford such a large event. Right. So you're still serving them with content they're interested in, but providing it to, to families who might be lower income or individuals who are struggling financially, who still want to be nerds and geeks, right. And giving them that opportunity. So I, I think, I always think it's great. And I also, it's nice to see that they're like, like um, GB said, there's, you're growing it from that, but you're still kind of having that as your base. So um, I guess let's go ahead and move into, um, let's talk about what your event will include. And I'll go ahead and share your website. So just let me know if you want me to click on any specific sections. <laughs> Do you guys want to start or maybe Indiana start with vendors? Mm -hmm. So um, I'll start off with vendors. <laughs> Wait, I think we got some Sam, do you need? Sorry, it was being a brat to me. I'm good now. Okay, I'm good now. <laughs> why are you? Can okay, you know what? Hang on, I gotta fix this. This is why it's being grumpy. Okay, now if I do this, are you gonna behave yourself? You gonna be nice? Do you think we should jump over the vendors for having? Yay! <laughs> well, they're saying like, what are we? Doing? So. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, you know what, then? Uh, I'll start with food then first. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Cool. yeah. So, yeah. so um, obviously, a lot of the conventions, at least here in Arizona, that I've seen, um, one of the biggest issues I see is when it comes to food. Don't get me wrong. Chicken tenders is fine. Sand <laughs> cold sandwiches is fine. But paying $20 on top of a premium, like whatever, like a $5 water bottle plus, you know, like all these things, it just doesn't make sense to me. I think a lot of people focus on anime and manga too much. And what I mean by that is like, they just focus on the animated portion of it. So everything that people think of, it's either shows or maybe stickers or merchandise, but no one ever really takes the time to think about how important food is in anime. Because like Miyazaki films all, you know, like make amazing dishes that people actually recreate and people get famous in real life recreating those dishes, right? So I wanted to curate a local team. So all of these people that you see um, are local to Arizona within maybe like a 50 mile radius. Most of them are mom and pop shops. Um, they have all curated a specific menu for the con itself. Uh, only a couple. If you actually click on their names too, it kind of gives you a little bio. Um, and a little bit about what they will be serving as well. Um, in terms of Nekomart, they're like a Japanese, uh, local Japanese like snack shop. Um, so I wanted to do that. One of the most exciting things about the food though is a couple of them are gonna be actually making anime food. So for example, Nishikawa Ramen is gonna make uh, Ichiraku Ramen from Naruto. Um, we have Sumire Karage uh, that Twisted Munchies is making and that's from Food Wars. And then I'm yeah. making uh, Nikolashi Tango from <laughs> Demon Slayer. So yeah, like obviously I see people like you react like that. And I'm like, why hasn't there been food? And we're we're pricing it at a point where it's it seems doable. We're not gonna give you a $20, you know, like you know, like ramen dish. It's gonna be like a pretty typically priced ramen dish. I just think it's a little bit something extra, you know. You don't have to wait in line for chicken tenders anymore. You can actually eat good food. Uh -huh. I, my mind is blown. Okay, so I'm a foodie. I literally make bentos for my lunches like every day. I, I practice Japanese cooking. I have this like Bible I've been reading that's this huge Japanese cookbook right now. Like this is my, my tiny obsession. And I have, I am, I will find a way to go. Like, Please. oh yeah. my God. Just the, you, you, you just said I mean, food wars. Stay at my like, house. It's fine. I, I got pizza at my house. Just come on down. Make it happen. I, love this idea like so absolutely much it is so genius and you were right like food is such an important cultural aspect korea japan like as somebody who travels there like my my first thing i think of when i think of travel is literally food so like 
Yeah. This is genius. I, yeah, I just, if, I'm hooked. If anything, too, this shows kind of like our mentality towards it. Because we could have come in as an anime convention where it's just like, you know, we can do the typical things that an anime convention does. But like I said, we wanted to do something cool for everyone. Um, whether it's an expense on our end, doesn't matter. Uh, we just want to make a convention that's fun and appealing to everyone. Uh, foodies can come, you know, there are foodies who love anime. They're, you know, like, it's not just one demographic. There's, there's different demographics that all share the same love. So if we can bring in, like, not only foodies, but, like, perhaps, like, dancers in as well or cosplayers in, like, everyone can enjoy it together. That's kind of what ooh, Khan's mentality is, I think, right now. Yeah, and I think also to add to it, like, we are trying to bring out some uh, content creators in the foodie industry. Uh, I think uh, Justin has, uh, I think, three or four uh, different uh, content creators. Yeah, that... we have, like, foodie influencers, local foodie influencers, um, just people. Like, it, it doesn't just have to be guests and us. You know, it's guests plus influencers plus YouTubers plus social media people. Whatever it is, like, we want everyone to, to be able to come and enjoy. If I may cut yeah. in real quick. Uh, you just had up on there um, of the music portion of the website, but also the homepage right when you go to uwukon.com. It says a new exciting anime experience. So while it does have con in its name, we really are trying to make it a, a convention experience, not just your regular kind of convention that you can go to. So that's where the food aspect comes in, the cosplayer aspect comes in. Um, it is very family friendly. We're offering free admission uh, with a paid badge to children 12 and under. So um, if you are a parent, you can bring you know your child as long as you pay for your badge. Uh, but the the music portion, we really a lot of conventions out here that I have been to um, and elsewhere, there may not be a lot of nightlife portions, right? Like nine or ten o'clock, it might shut down, or you have to take the party elsewhere, right? Because the convention hall is closing. So we are doing two nights worth of anime raves, um, really encouraging people to spend the entire day and into the night there. So we have DJ Saki Bomb, uh, we have Alex Cade. So we are very, very excited in adding to the experience of UwuCon. Yeah, and also like our, um, we'll be announcing our sponsors here soon, uh, but we, we're excited to work with some of our, uh, some local sponsors, but then also uh, some brand sponsors that will be uh, working with us to uh, kind of sponsor the raves and sponsor the weekend. So we're really, we'll be really excited to announce that very soon. Uh, but yeah, we're we're excited. That's amazing. I as a longtime goer of soccer con, that it's actually one of our big. That's like one of the cons' big shticks is they have. A, I wouldn't say it's a 24 hour con, but it really could be if you wanted it to be. <laughs> um, we have we have raves, we have all night content. I'm actually one of the late night content creators of, of soccer con. I do a lot of panels for them. And I feel like that is something that the community is missing. Like I I do love the fact that a lot of cons are going family friendly and that we're getting a lot like a much wider demographic because we're now getting families but I feel like a lot of these cons have just jumped to that without remembering that there's still a large percentile of adults who don't have kids or who do who still really want to embody that nightlife and really want to be there and be in this adult space where they feel like they can be themselves and so like thank you yeah. for honoring that because I feel like a lot of cons are losing that yeah, they are um, realizing they are. the demographic is changing. And now these people who once had a safe space are not turning to that anymore. Uh, no was, soccer con was trying to drift away from that. And they did one year where they dropped their adult content to a really low number. And it, it did change their demographic dramatically. And I think they realized how bad that was because this last year they allowed us to have adult content again. And all of the rooms were full. Like everybody, yeah. like we, all of our panels, I think, except for one had full rooms where we had to turn people away. Like it's obvious that this is content people want. It's obvious that people want to have a space late at night where they can go and still enjoy the party. So mm -hmm. like awesome job guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so and we've I got some comments. We've actually yeah. got a lot of comments. So <laughs> from Facebook, we've got Lillian who says, amazing beans, and this has to be the cutest convention ever. Then we have <laughs> Joel from Facebook who also says, did we get a senior discount? Just kidding. <laughs> um, and then Queen Zombie from Twitch is, what? People don't have kids? What's this madness? <laughs> Um, awesome. And then Matt, who's right next to me, saying, uh, 
from right next to you. Ha ha. Um, but this con's kind of blowing my mind. 12 and up free ticket. That's amazing. And I, I agree with you there. Most of the conventions now it's five and under that get a free ticket with one adult. So like that's pretty awesome that it's 12 um, and that you're kind of thinking about it. No, it's okay that you're thinking about that um, accommodation. And so also Chibi, you said you're from Seattle, right? Yeah. So um, we, we were just, did you know that the DJ Saki bomb is actually from Seattle? And yeah, I'm pretty sure. Cool. I'm pretty sure they've been to SoccerCon more than once. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So she, I actually saw her live at uh, Level Up Expo in Vegas oh, in February. Dang. And that's okay, how I yeah. uh, kind of. That's how I kind of got to know her and talk to her and I'm like that. I kind of put the feelers in then of like, hey, we're gonna be doing something, but just want to see if you'd be interested. And then we finally got to reach out to her uh, when everything came together. And she was super excited. Oh, that's excited. so cool. So, yeah. No, so. I, this just makes my heart sing. Like it's all it's the things great. that I want in a convention. So like, I'm, and, I'm listening. Then, you got ears. Yeah, and then, and then DJ, uh, uh, DJ Alex Cade, he's from Canada. So we're, we're going to be flying him and his whole production uh, from Canada uh, to oh, come wow. down and perform. Yeah, he's super famous on TikTok, so you should check him out if you're ever bored and like anime ravey music. Yeah, he's uh, he, he does an awesome thing that he does like a um, huge Naruto run uh, with all his. Uh, yeah, at the end of every rave. Yeah, so. I've seen that. I've seen that. I didn't realize at first what it was, and but now I'm like, oh my gosh, wait, yes, tied to Are you guys big Naruto fans? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so we've talked a lot about like, you know, what you want to have at your event and kind of what, what your founding purposes were and what you're excited about. So what, let's go through each one of you individually. And if you were attending UUCon, what would be your convention experience? If I were to attend UUCon. Like what would you focus on? Like what would make you happy and excited? Well, yeah. I feel like I'm biased because I'm obviously <laughs> the food guy. Right. Um, so yeah, it, definitely the food. And and that's not just for this con, but just in general, like you guys, I'm, I'm also a huge foodie. Obviously like this is my wheelhouse. It's my industry. Um, but I, I, I think a lot of people, don't think about how hard it is for any kind of vendor period to, you know, work a large convention, right? Um, especially when it comes to food, these guys are legit cooking food in an outdoor temporarily made kitchen for perhaps thousands of people. So I like going to support those people. I like, you know, being able to try out all the new things that perhaps they don't even have outside of the convention right um which in our case like 80 percent of the menus are all are all unique so you're never going to get this out of ucon right and there's no overlap so yeah and there's no overlap which which i specifically wanted because i don't want you know someone not going or sorry going home not happy right um so i would definitely hit up the food or hungry or hungry, or hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Can I interject? I, I have yeah. a question for the food. Sorry. Um, what kind of precautions and thought process have you gone into allergies going into the so, food? Is it just focused on the food and hopefully there's enough variety or? Yeah. So what it is, is um, everyone has kind of like parameters that they have to work around. Oh. Um, so the first one is that they don't compete with one another. Right. So okay. there's not going to be two boba people. There's not going to be two ice cream people. So that's how we started with. Then we told everyone that they should add a vegetarian option and as many outside of their one one specialty dish um, that they should, you know, curate their menu based on those things. So we have like vegetarian options. We have gluten free options. You, you are going to have to kind of like look around for it. Not every single vendor is going to have it. Um, but we do have options. Um, and not only that, uh, I also wanted to say. I know I've been hyping the food up a lot, but there are also concessions at our venue as well. Okay. It's just, that's the venue concession. Whereas like, I wanted to bring in a little bit, you know, something more. We're creating the Asian yeah. district. Mm -hmm. of, yeah. Right. There is an on-site restaurant even and snack vendors. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the people that do want the chicken, uh, chicken tenders or, or whatever, they, they will be, the cheeseburger, they will be satisfied. There's, yeah. And there's, I've looked, so I've been to a lot of these restaurants that you actually have on your list. Um, mm -hmm. And I, we're, food trucks, depending, like I've been mm -hmm. to events where they've mm -hmm. attended like Hot Bamboo. A lot of these other places, I can say from experience 
that they have a lot. Like I have, uh, my partner is vegan and then I've got people that I know who have dairy allergies and I'm allergic to onions of all things. Um, and so I've not had any issues with them accommodating me. Um, and okay, even with a, them working I, I'm a, a I'm a food allergy human. So that's yeah. why I ask. <laughs> I, I, I have traveled with TV before and I, it is interesting trying to make sure that TV's fed. Um, so I, I, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I do, I do have to say, having looked at who you have, most of them that I've at least gone to have been extremely accommodating. Yeah, and also you have to remember at the end of the day, we're all professionals in the restaurant industry. Mm -hmm. So we all already know that we need to not just have, you know, straight like meat, for example, or like <laughs> your only veggies or, you know, like, we, we know we'll we'll take care of you guys that's what we've been doing um they all know they thank you yeah no that, that sure totally they, answered my question it's got the big question we're getting from like youtube for sakura is like what about people with dairy allergies or vegan options and i know that at least three of what i saw on your website have dairy and vegan options even one of the tea uh companies they even come in with almond and coconut milk for people yeah. who can't have stuff yeah, I, i've have ordered from like non-dairy like sorbets uh like a homemade yeah. sorbet come in as well you know like so we we got it covered Yay, that I just I wanted to make sure that was out there because for me that's an important <laughs> thing. So, <laughs> yeah, for so sure. all right. Um so we, we got food with you and then next. Uh so I mean I have traveled I've traveled to so many conventions over the past 10 years. Um like and so my biggest thing is I I was I used to run a comic book media company. Uh and so my whole thing was I always loved just going to meet you know, the celebrities, the, the artists and uh, all the featured kind of guests. And I, I had the great opportunity to be able to kind of advertise and uh, interview all of them uh, all the time. So that was my biggest kind of thing around convention. So my focus on Ubicon was really the voice actors uh, and the talent, um, not just the voice actors, but talent in general. Um, so that's what my huge focus was. Um, I, Aside that, when I go to every convention, I have an obsession with Snorlax. So uh, I have to find something with Snorlax to be able to take home with me. Uh, uh, it's just an obsession of mine. So did, uh, did I see Lisa Ortez on your list? I yeah. Oh my god, that's amazing. So uh, we've we've promised at least twenty uh, voice actors. I think we're going to be rounding out around twenty-two. Um, that's who we have all contracted right now. Uh, but, um, and we will be announcing the kind of the finale, uh, next Friday, uh, of who's coming. So, uh, everyone should be very, very excited. Uh, the only thing I'll give as a hint is that, um, there is one person that will be coming that has never done an anime convention. Uh, we will be his first ever, uh, anime convention, uh, and he will be announcing that on his social media as well. So we are very, very excited to announce that. And our staff knows yeah. who they are. <laughs> and, and, and they can't they can't they can't contain themselves. So she like went she had to go in a room and scream. So, so you know what that means it's really, really exciting. You have to go in a room and scream. That's gotta be like a good one. Yeah. So that's, I just that's like pretty exciting. It's so it's but like, like the first time I got to meet Adam Savage, I lost my mind. Oh yeah. So, <laughs> so like just the, the whole curation of it is like we really wanted to spread kind of the um, the slew of different uh, current animes and also past animes, because uh, a lot of uh, a lot of cons uh, kind of they'll either focus on one or the other, uh, mm -hmm. either like a lot of like older uh, either animes or older uh, things, or they'll just do all current, current, current. And so we really wanted to be able to blend both of them. Uh, we wanted to. Yeah, you have a lot of a variety. Like I, I can say I've met like Bryce Pappenbrook like twenty times now. Like. The first time was was Bryce is great. Uh, Bryce, yeah, yeah Bryce awesome. is great. Yeah, he Bryce but, yeah. is great, but Bryce is everywhere. And yeah. I, I mean, Bryce is awesome. Bryce is everywhere. So it's kind of cool to see some of these more um, le less invited voice actors being present on your list. Yes, exactly. I, yeah. I'm a classic anime geek, so like I saw names and I'm like, oh my god, these are like my heroes that started the industry. Like, yeah, I that's amazing. Kind of like uh, there's a lot there's there's a good amount of them there from the. Uh, WB and like four kids uh, era, yeah. Like that. So uh, and, and, and the other hand, just wait for next week that it will end up adding to the four kids era. So 
Yeah. Uh, it will be good. I can yeah. show there's my two, There's two guests that we'll be adding to uh, the four kids area. So, uh, but yeah, we're, we're excited. And um, uh, I'm, uh, I'm excited to be able to showcase them. Um, I think um, like it was a, we, we understand like coming out of it, like when we announced that we're going to have 20 voice actors, everyone was like, yeah, right. <laughs> and, uh, and then we're like slowly every week we're, we're dropping them. Um, so it, it's been, it's been really fun to see everyone's kind of um, emotion about it. So it's, we're excited about it and uh, I think it'll be fun. So. Well, see, we've got, we got like a whole, everyone's got just this nice, well-rounded, just, this is what I want. All right. We're going to keep going down yep. around the table. <laughs> You said well-rounded. Uh, that's kind of how I view my convention experiences. I'm from the Southeast, so I attended Dragon Con for like a decade before coming out here. So I definitely like run the gamut of conventions. So I'm I'm a celebrity person. So first, like I always do my like celebrity meet and greets and like the celebrity panels first. Um, and then I always walk the vendor halls. Um, there rarely is good food. So that is what I am very excited about. Uh, but honestly, the late night rave stuff, I'm super stoked for because I have not had that since attending Dragon Con in Atlanta um, of having like late night on site, like nightlife. And so I just, I just want to dance. Am I allowed to do like, I, I probably won't be allowed to just dance it out, but I just want to dance. So I'm, I, I'm a well round, like I go everywhere at cons because I want to make the most of, of, you know, my badge price. And everything so um can I, I can i interrupt yeah real quick? of course so, uh, something about the the rave too is a, a lot of people have gone to these raves and they're really just kind of like inside of like a hotel room that's kind of big ish with lights and a stage oh, yeah. typically yeah. unless you go to like country roll expo or anime expo with it we've actually invested heavily into the rave itself so we're we're trying we're we're bringing in people who who did decadence um to to help set up our rave right so we're not we're when we say rave we actually mean rave <laughs> yes! so it's not it, yeah it's not gonna be <laughs> like yeah it's not <laughs> like a hey this is like a little you know celebration like, like it's like a legitimate <laughs> rave um anywhere i'll be there in spirit with everybody you see i'm epileptic so i can't be anywhere uh -huh. near things uh -huh. like that so i sit outside and just listen to the music from the outside it's fine i'll be oh, gotcha. creep on i the mean music. that would work too Dance we're gonna outside. have music everywhere Dance outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, I mean, I wanted to go. Dragon Con's on my list. I'm hoping next year or the year after, Dragon Con is on my list. So, oh, as a cosplayer, you have got to go. Yeah, it it's just it's like, always coincided with with our local big anime convention, Saboten, oh, or it's okay. coincided with another big event, and I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> oh my god. it is a so, cosplayer heaven over there. Like, it yeah, is I and I have I have two hookins now. They've requested my costume group that I'm a part of back in Tucson. They want us in their parade, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm ready. Oh my gosh! Oh, you'll have to let me know. I hope you can go sometime soon. Ish. Yeah. yeah, it'd be so cool. All okay, right, continue. So you you were you were saying? Yes. No. Do you have? Oh no, I'm no, I'm done. I'm just the the raver. All right, guys. Which you wouldn't know to look at me. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, number one, I know we already covered food, but I'm so excited for the food because I just like eating so much. <laughs> I know. It's like the highlight of my day and like what I think about all the time. But um, besides that, like I am excited for panels. I just really like learning. I know that sounds so like boring and so nerdy, but I just like learning from other people because I think there's always something you can like learn from someone and like their experience. And I think we're just going to have a lot of different types of panels too. So I think that's something that we're just going to be really excited to like show different people and like what they can learn about. Um, I think also like for the retail vendors, we're doing something kind of different. I mean, it's been done before, but we're also going to have tattoo artists. So like, I think just seeing tattoo artists with like anime experience, like, I, I don't know, that's like super fun. And like, should I get a tattoo? Yes, <laughs> the answer is always yes. <laughs> so that's just like some of the things I'm looking forward to myself. I have no tattoos. My girlfriend is keeps trying to ask me, we should get matching tattoos. I'm like, 
Hmm, I don't think so. <laughs> Time to start. That's what we're start. I was actually at a very small con this last week and they had tattoo or last weekend, the before the last time I was with people. Um I uh they had a tattoo booth and I was so surprised, but like this is becoming a more popular thing. I thought it was just like an Emerald City thing, but like we're seeing that a lot more. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a cool aspect to have at different conventions. Yeah. yeah especially because like the the whole anime industry has gotten better in the sense of it's become more inclusive and everyone's okay with it now like imagine 20 years ago doing what we're doing now people would be like wow nerd get out of here you know like but yeah but nowadays yeah. it's cool and it and because of that whether it's kanye rapping about it you know people are getting tattoos now and tattoo I mean, artists are artists you know um they, yeah i think it's really cool seeing amazing. tattoo artists at conventions yeah. i like for instance, Phoenix typically has in their in their exhibitor hall, they have two separate areas for tattoos because the lines get so insane that they mm -hmm. had to like split it. And it's awesome just seeing like, I mean, it's all like it's, they usually have like some kind of plastic or thing protecting around, but it's really cool seeing someone actually drawing on a person. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, Justin just got a new tattoo on his on his hand. I don't know if you can see oh, it. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't, I'm a super weeb too. So like I have like uh, the transmutation <laughs> circle from Full Metal Alchemist, Roy Mustangs. Uh, I also have Madara's uh, Sharingan. I have some Naruto in the back. Got some Ambu in the front. Yes. You got it covered. Get I'm, covered. Yeah, I'm covered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're not, we're also not people who don't have any anime experience. Like we all love anime, right? So. Okay. That's awesome. So we're, so we're talking about vendors. We're talking about tattoo artists. Justin's tattoo artist is actually, is actually going to be at our con. We're going to be really excited. Yeah. Um, so I really wanted to talk about vendors and basically like I've been a vendor for three years. I've been through very great cons and really bad cons uh, on how they treat their vendors. And I think it's very important that we treat our vendors and artists um, with um, with basically a lot of respect and give them like really great amenities. So one of the things that I really pushed on and then these guys agreed and they're really hyped about it is um, many times artists and vendors are traveling alone. So we are actually offering food runners, bathroom runners. Like if you need to go to the restroom, we'll watch your booth for you. Um, if you need food, but you got a long line, we'll run food for you. Um, we're also going to have a signature special for our voice actors and vendors. Um, we're still working out the details on that. Uh, vendors and artists will have pri their own private restroom. Um, they'll also have um, their like own designated parking area, so they're not fighting for parking in the parking lot. Uh, playing bumper cars out there and everything. Especially being in Arizona, we we really it was like free water, like and free water. Gosh, yeah. like free yeah. water, free it's water so for days. Everyone gets one. Yeah, so. I I commend you. Like that, mm -hmm. that sounds so amazing. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, and I think we think it's a very important aspect about taking care of our vendors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so having the volunteer staff to be able to help everywhere, uh, but at the same time, kind of. Uh, kind of really just give them the breaks like if they just it's stressful it's and it's a long day sometimes you know it's it's 10 to 12 hour days so uh like hey you want to go to the bathroom hey you want to go you want to go take a smoke break cool like one of our one of our one of our like runners will, will come uh if you want to tell them uh what to do how to ring out sales uh, uh everyone's going to be kind of semi-trained on pretty much square and everything before we go there so we really just want to provide that service for them and uh, to to have a peace of mind for them to like kind of okay I can I can walk away from my booth for you know ten minutes and everything will be fine so and as far as the venue goes everything is indoors uh, there will be panel rooms um, there's also plenty of parking so while it so is much parking. so parking so much <laughs> so while it is at a place that has park in its name it's at Bell Bank Park in Mesa they're brand new they're a sports complex um, everything is indoors. And there is plenty of parking, which for some of the like Phoenix conventions out here, you're taking the light rail or you're carpooling or Ubering and there's just not, uh, or you're paying exorbitant prices for parking. Um, that would not be the case. So if you pause right, content. if you pause right there, if you go up a little bit to the, yeah, that first picture. So that's where the, uh, all, all of the food vendors and everything will be uh, down that whole way. Um, the whole, so that is that's outdoors, I suppose. Yeah, that's outdoors. So, but but, uh, but then also the cool thing, which uh, we've been told that it should be open by the time that we have our convention, is a uh, it's a huge zip line. 
uh, yeah. going through the whole so thing excited. down there. And everyone is super excited about that because, I mean, what some cool action shots with cosplay of <laughs> going through a zip line. Flying above the, the Asian food stalls, you know? Yes. I, I feel like I had a moment of horror and a moment of like, oh, that sounds fun. And then yeah. like, oh, wait, <laughs> it. <laughs> so... Yeah, and uh, obviously we, we've seen we've seen comments here and there about the flooring and everything like that. But um, our, our flooring is uh, it, like it, it's it's going to be walked on, and, and they know that. And we uh, we we've kind of set the we, we've set everything for that. So uh, we're everything's all good there. And then also there's just a lot of space. Like so we we, we signed a multi-year deal with them, um, and we're going to be. Uh, building as we go with this. So uh, we can fit up to about 350 vendors uh, based off the space in there. Um, and then for next year, it, it goes up to about 750 if we ever wanted to go that high. So there's room for growth. And uh, also they are, if we're, since we're talking about the venue a little bit, that um, the there are uh, they have plans on building the hotels, which will be like right on, uh, uh, right on campus, right there uh, next year. So it's super exciting. Yeah, that's nice. And like I, I mean, I I go to a lot of Arizona conventions. I mean, I'm getting ready to go to Tucson next weekend, um, and so I I can say that parking is a significant issue, especially Tucson mm -hmm. until they finally visit built a parking garage it was like you parked there and then you parked downtown and then you parked at churches and then sometimes you, you'd have to park over the other side of the freeway because you just couldn't find anything even mm -hmm. paid parking was full so it's it's nice seeing that the size of the space actually has parking that matches so that's really cool. yeah it's it's the largest um sports complex in the united states they were just kind of not like kind of was told that and so it's super cool and it's it's a different venue obviously but uh that was the kind of um also the fun part of trying to recreate and create this yeah. convention and they're uh they're willing to work with us the, that we're now you know their partners on throwing these conventions and uh we're hoping to be throwing uh, uh two per year uh and so um we are excited for their growth they're they're also expecting um to be building an amphitheater is it amphitheater is that what it's called amphitheater I don't know what's going yeah. on. Yeah, amphitheater. An, that's an uh, outdoor theater or an indoor theater. An out, an outdoor one that sure does. Yeah, <laughs> it, yeah, for concerts and everything, so we can kind of grow the concert area uh, for a larger, uh, uh, larger event and everything. So uh, the for our raves this year, we can hold about twenty five hundred uh, inside, uh, and then hopefully for next year, they're going to be building it to hold about fifteen thousand. So we can bring out yeah. some bigger names, bigger names, and uh, and stuff like that too kind of grow with everything. When I saw that it was at a sports complex, part of me was like, are they going to let us walk around on that floor? Because I know how specific, like, I know how basketball courts and stuff are treated, but then I was also like, but it's a sport complex. That means it's going to have really freaking good AC. Like, yes. Oh, <laughs> the AC, the AC is on uh, point. Yes. It's great. We were talking about it every I mean, sports complex about. always have the best AC. The best. Mm -hmm. You need it in Arizona as well. You don't want that musty kind of like humid. Even though like we don't know what it's going to be like uh, end of October. Like it's always a uh, Russian roulette kind of. Are we going to get? Uh, are we going to get hot or are we going to get a cool? Yeah, Halloween? sometimes like that Halloween weekend is. Oh, congratulations! You dropped into the seventies. And other times it's we're going to do one last one hundred and ten just to mess with you. Um, yeah, yes, exactly, yes. exactly. You don't know. <laughs> That's so crazy. Like where I'm at, we're having a really weird season and it started cooling down really early. So like today I'm actually genuinely cold, which is why I have like my fur and my whole kimono piece on because it's like <laughs> cold here. And so hearing that like October can reach 110, I'm like, oh, did, did that's that pretty gross. Yeah. 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 That very right now, like, and we're expected to still be between 100 and 105 for the next oh three to six weeks. That's crazy. Fun. <laughs> yep. So we've got a couple, we've got one more comment from uh, Facebook. Alina is saying, I'm super excited for this event. The zip line is going to be an epic attraction. <laughs> I see, I can't do zip lines just Fear. because, like, I'm not afraid of heights or anything, but I'm like, no, I want to be in control of my own fall speed, okay? <laughs> 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 
I'll do it. It would 100% matter. I'm not the risk taker. The girls will do it. Yeah. I'm not the risk taker. When it comes like cliff like I'd rather I'd rather cliff. have a rope on a rock off a cliff and making my own climb down than just <laughs> yeah I'll just sit here and watch you guys so. yeah. my I just yeah. have this like fear of my costume pieces falling off so it's like if I was in a costume that I a was a hundred percent confident nothing would fall off then yeah this sounds like a great idea but I think of some of my bigger builds and I'm like I don't, I couldn't even get in line. Like, you know what? There's you just no the way. Costumers go up there and just take off part of their costume hand. That's what would happen. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, totally going to happen. Okay, so we've gone ahead and we've kind of, I think we've gone through everybody's interests or experience. So we talked, you actually already talked about one of the items I wanted to cover, which were your goals for the future and how you want to have two events a year and kind of what your growth span is or growth scoping is. Uh, and what the bandwidth of the venue should be. So I think that's really cool. You kind of covered a lot of that. So I guess my question here is you've, you've shown a lot of the voice actors and stuff. Do you, are you able to talk about any local um, artists or cosplayers or vendors that you already have yeah. attending or are going to uh, promote? Sure. Absolutely. So I can speak on the, on the artist part. Um, so well, we're actually going to be hopefully announcing him um, either tonight or tomorrow uh but uh as you can see the art behind us it's uh, actually uh dominic glover uh, who is the artist that was featured at ax uh, this year doing the live 12 foot drawing um he's a phenomenal artist that is really known in the community he has a huge social media following on tiktok and uh, instagram uh he is one of the best artists but he's bringing in a whole collective um, of artists uh, that is kind of creating a full art gallery. Um, everyone kind of knows like a what an island is at a con. Well, he's coming in to actually kind of create a country, we're calling it. Uh, it's about 25 booths uh, in, in size. Yes. Yeah, what's I your question? Know. What is an island in a con? I, an island is a new, an It's like island a series of booths that made their own little baby peninsula like at yeah, the car. Kind of like like, it's like four boots together. It's usually like a 20 okay. by 40. I didn't realize that was called an island. Thank you. Continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so now he, he wants to create a country. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so we're kind of like kind of dictating uh, like if he wants a whole corner, if he does. Uh, but he wants to be featured uh, as like a full um, all the artists. So uh, some of the artists that are coming out with him um, are people that work with like Lucasfilm, uh, Jed Henry. Um, we have V1 Tech. Uh, Deviant Art and um, what was the is there, what was the other one? Um, uh, I want to. Uh, it's it's the art gallery. I, I have to look at it again. But everything will be announced here soon. Um, but so, and then Dominic is local. He 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 lives here, and then all all his other friends are coming from uh, around uh, everywhere. But uh, Dominic lives here. So uh, artists with that, and then um, really, I mean. Since, you know, I, I own Olympus Games here and we we highlight a lot of entrepreneurship uh, by working with a lot of the local artists to uh, do shirts and everything. Um, but we are all about, you know, the smaller and uh, the art, like the, what is it, like the artist alley and whatnot. Yeah. And so that was the other thing that we tried doing a little different uh, for our convention was we really wanted to highlight artist alley by making the the flow chart them in the middle and so we're putting all the artists in the middle of the convention with all the other exhibitors kind of surrounding them so it it forces and highlights them that everyone will will see them they're not just off in the corner or off in the back uh that like other conventions have had so that's the thing that we're excited about yeah so that's nice because i feel like a lot of conventions focus so much on who spent the most on the booth space mm -hmm. instead of what's actually drawing in their uh attendees so because you've been attendees and you've, you've run um pop-ups and you've gone to conventions you you have a unique perspective of coming and going i know what draws me so what draws our little group here will probably draw other people too. So let's find a way to make that the feature. And yeah, yeah. like vendors and exhibitors, they are going to make you money. Got it. Cool. Understand. But artists are really what draws people to conventions, just like yep. guests. And, and 
a lot of the times in Arizona, that's one thing that I feel like the convention scene hasn't quite grasped yet. Is uh, most not people, just Arizona. Yeah, I, a lot one of, of my biggest <laughs> beefs yeah. with my local it's hard cons to find artist alley is like, where Arizona, artist alley is located. Artist alley on the sixth floor, and half the people don't know there is a sixth floor. So, yes. Yeah. No, it drives me insane because Emerald City yeah, does that. Was one of those, oh, yeah, it was one of those artists that got trapped upstairs. The third floor. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. And so it's one of those things that like actually having them in the thoroughfare is brilliant. And I think that's I mean, that's one thing that I, I have to give props to Game on Expo for too. They actually fit in all of Artist Alley with the big exhibitors and they make it to where their flow. You are going to be encountering art artists no matter yep. what aisle you're in. And so seeing that you're trying to centralize them because people always go right into the center of a con, right? They always kind of just gravitate there. So that's that space allocation is brilliant. So that's awesome. Yeah. And um, as far as, as local goes also, um, of course, we'll have volunteers from all over Arizona, but we are working specifically with Arizona State and Northern Arizona University as well. Um, for volunteers and in ex, you know in exchange for badges and things like that, so we we are trying to partner. It's actually with... yeah, it's a credit program. Sorry, Lauren. Oh no, please. It's a it's a it's a credit um, kind of thing where it actually helps them uh, have credit hours uh, for, for their, their student worker hours, yeah. kind of stuff for like their, that. For, yeah, yeah, for their degree. Uh, and so uh, it's it's almost like the the, the internship in a, in a way, and it helps them the kind of get yeah, and, yeah get some live kind of like. Like I wish experience. more cons would do that because there are plenty of able bodies that want to assist that are big freaking nerds too that are attending college. And I mean, I, I've been to college. It's expensive. And so it's one of those things that like give them a chance to come in, do some, some work for you. Also get some enterprise experience and yeah. then on top of it, have fun. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, I, I'm trying not to a... use big words guys, but like I am, I'm master degree educated, so I'm a nerd nerd. Like, um, just, just, what's up? <laughs> what's up? So we, we got a pretty valuable. I, see, I actually have a master's degree in business leadership and organization. So, like, the way you're talking just like, gets my little nerdy self, like, yeah, in press. <laughs> good, 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 good. Yeah. Okay. So, um, a lot of our focus is um, highlighting our local artists. Um, many, like, our badges that we are going to be coming out for for the event are made. Well, the one artwork. of them is not local anymore. Yeah. She recently moved for a, a really great job opportunity, um, but we are pushing to have our local artists really be featured, including all the way to our badges, our lanyards, and even like our, the exclusive art that we're going to have there is going. They're going to be by local artists. Yeah, soon in, in a few That's weeks, cool. uh, we'll be we'll be promoting our kind of our con exclusive uh, prints and also shirts that uh, people will be able to purchase or they will receive with uh, when they purchase the full event badge mm -hmm. and everything. So, um, which we're really excited about to show, uh, showcase all of the, uh, Before you talk to me, by the way, I have big questions. I'm so sorry. They were the talking. ones I was going to talk about. So don't worry oh, about it. Okay. <laughs> all right. Oh, you, do you want to <laughs> keep going? Keep... Okay. No, um, no, I, I was just waiting for a break. It's fine. <laughs> okay. So we have two questions from the, from Facebook. One of them is what cosplay specific activities will UUCon have? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we have just uh, kind of partnered with uh, Superheroes Unlimited uh, recently um, to kind of uh, head that uh, genre. Um, we have uh, we have about six confirmed uh, co uh, local cosplayers that we will be announcing here sh uh, shortly. Um, and then what we're what we're planning to do is kind of doing like a uh, we're going to be doing a cosplay masquerade on uh on saturday like a uh like a contest in a sense where we really want to focus on getting everyone across the stage uh and then being able to be interviewed uh in front of our kind of banners and whatnot uh and really uh showcasing all different um i think we're doing seven or eight different uh like genres uh, yeah genres in in, in, in judging so, um, and then we're hoping so you've got to like maybe like a skills category versus a maker category versus right. um, yeah. best personalization or best on stage presence, stuff like that. Sure. Yep. And so um, it's going to be headstrong through local cosplay, but then we are, um, and again, we, we'll be announcing in the next coming weeks, um, we will have um, one uh, more higher, I don't know what you want to call it, like higher. Um, social media or uh professional cosplay that will be coming from out of state so okay. uh, 
So we're excited to, uh, that she'll be more of like a judge and kind of just doing a lot of things like that. So we're also accepting panel panel submissions. We really do want UwuCon to be, you know, by the people for the people. Um, so if there is someone out there also who is a cosplayer or a seamstress or or whomever who would like to you know, has the idea of doing a panel. Wait, Jamie, um, is it like maybe I do like six panels every convention? Maybe I mean, maybe yeah. I should submit or yeah. something. Is it ready yet? Ready. Submit, yes, yes. There is a place on the website where you could submit your, your panel idea as well. So we really do mean it when we say like we're local and we appreciate like all of the feedback. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, if you have ideas, send them our way. I think the the next question actually kind of follows into that being a crafter of sorts and a cosplayer is will there be any sort of like repair area lounge uh somewhere yeah. for cosplayers to get off the floor adjust <laughs> we're, the we're actually yeah we're area. actually very excited to to actually announce that is um we we actually dedicated a whole uh like 20 by 20 booth uh or 20 by 10 booth uh that will have curtains and everything in there that uh, we actually have a cosplay medic coming that will be bringing his sewing kits and 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 everything to uh, kind of help out with that. And then also just also a, a place where if cosplayers want to just come sit down uh, for a little bit behind like away from everyone. Um, and then also uh, we're allowing cosplayers to actually use the locker rooms um, for getting ready and also uh, My kind of. Like oh bless yeah. your heart. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So and this also, brain exploded bathroom. jaw drop. This doesn't exist in America, but this is a very like in the cosplay community in some parts of Europe and in Japan, it is very, very normalized to get dressed at the convention. But for some reason sure. in the United States, this just doesn't exist. So like a plus for you guys for like fucking toeing the way, excuse my language, but like yeah. I had to get ready at the last con I went to and that was such a pain in the ass. Like, yeah, at Game on Expo, I, went, I literally had to wear a nude bodysuit and I got dressed in the middle of the con floor because I was not wearing my head to toe. Hey, dedication though for you. That, yeah. <laughs> I did no. Shinha from Genshin Impact and I got dressed on the con floor. Yeah, no, we we pretty much used the bathroom for half of it, and then like I was at our booth like finishing touches because the space didn't have anywhere for cosplayers to to safely dress, and this is a problem I've seen everywhere. Like people have repair stations that's becoming more popular, thank goodness, but I've never seen a place that's safe for cosplayers to prepare yeah. in. Yeah. So yeah. like, yes. <laughs> and I, I know I know Genshin is kind of a a large kind of cosplay right now, and so. Uh, we're excited to hopefully have a lot of you um, cosplay as that, and I know that it does take time. So, uh, yeah, using the the private bathroom There's and the private accessories locker accessories for one outfit on Genshin. It's just like you want to spend. It took me thirty minutes just to use the bathroom, guys, and I had to have someone come in and help me because I couldn't get out of it. Oh, Lord. <laughs> and just and just so you know, we I think we have up to, I think we have six voice actors that are all part of Genshin. Oh wow! Um, so. Uh, we're very excited for them as well. So I think it'd be cool to do a um, some cosplay uh, kind of thing with them uh, where it's like a side by side with their character and uh, the cosplayer. So, no, I th this sounds like from a cosplayer slash attendee slash somebody who's kind of worked on conventions like you guys have covered so many things that I wish other cons would cover. And this is just like, I'm, I don't understand how this is your first convention. Like you, you've already done so much that other cons don't even think about until like four or five conventions later where they're like, oh, well, this didn't work here. So let's try this. But you guys, well, I mean, I guess you do pop-ups, but like, so you do have some experience, but it just shocks me how much you've already encompassed. And this yeah, is I mean, collectively, individually, we all have our separate event experiences like i'm from the food event side he's mm -hmm. from you know the anime and so on and so forth the vendors yeah. blah 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 and after having differing event experiences and then being able to bring that together we see that if if the guests are happy that means usually that everyone who's working with us is happy if everyone exactly. who's working with us is unhappy the guests are gonna be unhappy so if our cosplayers are happy if our vendors are happy if our food is happy if our ravers are happy then they're gonna do the best to their ability 
And then that in turn means that all the guests are going to be happy, right? So I think that's what we're heavily focused on. We, we're, we're not a money grab team. We want everyone to be happy. Because they're our best cheerleaders. Mm -hmm. we need <laughs> Without you are... guys, there's right. no con. Without right. guests, there's no con. So we need, we need people to come to, you know, UwuCon this very first you know, year and then be like, oh my gosh, that was amazing. They had this, they cared about the food. They cared about like my cosplay. They cared about, I was overheated or whatever the case may be. Like, like I, I look forward to what they do next. So we really, I mean, it doesn't benefit anyone to provide yeah. Um, yeah. And I think our like a crappy experience. Like the, the, so market, far. the marketing uh, is really just based off of like the, the grassroots. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, we do have uh, our, our partnerships that we will be working with. Uh, but like really getting out there in the community to really showcase who we are and what we're going to be doing has been awesome. I, I mean, um, just going to the mall yesterday, like I did go play in the Pokemon uh, uh, event, the Pokemon Go event. And uh, I'm walking around the mall and, and I see all these cosplay going on at Chandler Mall. And I'm like, What's going on? Is there is there a is there a meetup or anything? Oh, so Chandler I, Mall, so Chandler and uh, Chandler Mall and Scottsdale Mall. Uh, there's like two weekends a month where people just meet up and go cosplay and different things. Yeah, and I didn't that's, know. That's and so I, I didn't know that. So I, I didn't know that either. Yeah, that's so, amazing. So I finally asked. I stopped someone. I was like, I'm so sorry. Can I can I ask you? I was like, is there a cosplay meetup? And she was like, No, we just want to kind of uh, showcase. Like we just wanted to represent ourselves and kind of. And I was like. That's really cool. And That's I was amazing. like, and I was like, by the way, here you go. And I just gave him <laughs> one of our flyers and, and, and she was like, oh my God, this is amazing. So it, it was just super cool and uh, to see, see all that. So we're, we are really excited about like the marketing and, um, and I'm like that, like, like I said, of course the, the sponsorships will come and, uh, but I think using some of the local sponsorships really going to show a, our credibility with, uh, with the community. Um, you know, we're working with all the local, uh, news channels and, uh, and also radio um, for radio ads. So, uh, but also just kind of go into the mom and pop shops and, and 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 all these things, and just really, really trying to showcase and and kind of explain who we are before we actually have this event. So, yeah, yeah, that's no, that's awesome. So we're we're actually we hit an hour. It happened, and I don't want to keep oh, wow. you guys for much oh, wow. longer. I know it's been too enjoyable. Um, and so I guess what we'll go ahead and do is I've shared your link several times on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. We've also shared the panel submission link. So please check in the comment section and look for those. Um, and also as usual, guys, you can reach out to cause talk live and we can give you any information on our previous episodes. And don't forget about our, about our discord as well. Cause we talk about that as well there. It will, okay. So do you guys have any closing discord will be offline. Discord's being offline for a little while today, and then it'll oh, be back we, we're, online. We're, we're, we're adding sorry. <laughs> we're, we're, we're doing, adding yeah, we're, we're, we're doing some processing and verifications, and it, it takes time. It will be offline, but it's coming back. I promise by the end of today, it'll be up and running like normal. So, so join tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll share all of our Discord links. It's fine. Um, but yeah, so I, I want to thank UwuCon for joining us today. Thank you so much for giving us all this information. Um, I, I, I am now after Tucson Comic Con just going to go buy a ticket and also do some panel submissions. Um, and because, uh, you know, uh, yeah, it's October. It'd be awesome. Um, but yeah, do you have any closing statements? Anything that you want to say before we go? Uh, no, I mean, honestly, just uh, obviously um, just keep looking through our social media as we continue to announce uh, kind of everything that is coming out. We're going to continue kind of highlighting uh, our, our voice actors, our cosplay, and uh, uh, our food vendors, and also our regular vendors uh, in the coming uh, like month uh, and like that. So um, just we hope everyone can go buy their tickets, and, uh, and uh, we'll see everyone there. And we appreciate you guys again. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. Thank you so, so much. It's been amazing. It's been really fun. Thank you. Well, thank you guys for joining us again. And um, I am Thermo Cosplay. You can reach me at thermocosplay.com. Chibi? I'm Chibi Raincloud. Uh, you can reach me at uh, Discord, Twitch, Instagram, Chibi Raincloud. Yep. And you can find us at costalk-live.com. We will see you all next weekend from Tucson Comic Con. So have a good weekend and uh, we're just going to wave goodbye to everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys.